We've heard a bit before about the clinical research collaboratives that are becoming such an important feature of the ERS's program. And I've got somebody with me, Ratko Dukanovic, who is going to tell me about another of those uh, collaborations, which is called SHARP. Tell me a bit more about it. So SHARP is a, a clinical research collaboration. I won't explain all the, the whole acronym, but uh, it focuses on severe asthma, um, trying to understand why asthma is so heterogeneous. And the P in the word SHARP stands for patient-centered. And that is uh, quite a novel thing. In fact, it's unique. Uh, uh, we are the first uh, clinical research collaboration where uh, a patient, or actually two patients, uh, are co-chairs. There are four co-chairs of the CRC. And, and we have two uh, patients who actually therefore lead uh, the collaboration. They don't, they're not just ask for their views on how research is done and whether they have any suggestions, but they actually lead it. And that has been transformative. It has completely changed. It's brought uh, much more uh, debate into what we do, why we do things, and it is all driven by the needs of patients. Because a lot of clinicians are almost frightened of patients. They think that somehow the clinicians won't be able to do what they want to do if patients are involved. And in actual fact, the richness of uh, research that can be done because of patients is something that I think is really underappreciated. Yes, I, I, I appreciate that some, some people might be perhaps even intimidated by uh, by discussing projects with their patients. But I think that's a misplaced uh, worry uh, because ultimately the reason why I went into medicine was of course there was a scientific interest but I wanted to help people. And the best way to help people is to, under, you know, to ask them, well, what is it that we need to do for you? So, for example, uh, what is really puzzling is uh, most drugs are developed with, at the moment, in, in asthma in relation to, you know, simple symptom scores, uh, lung function, and how frequently they have exacerbations. But if you ask patients what bothers them, yes, of course, the quality of life bothers them and, and exacerbations bothers them, but they'll tell you things which, you know, you wouldn't think unless you yourself had severe asthma and not many specialists like myself have severe asthma. So it makes absolute sense to ask the patients and then put all your energy, all the scientific knowledge, all the clinical expertise into studying for that particular agenda. Yes, because otherwise we may be solving the wrong problems. Yes, look, uh, I'm not gonna say that any problem solved is good, but you know, or solving for the problems that are not as important to patients. It, it, it's a question of priority, and and you know who knows best what the priority is than the patient. It's just like you know you and I when we go into a shop or into a restaurant. Well, we are the customers. If if, if the if the owners don't listen to us, then what good is it to them? You know, they, it won't do their business any good. Similarly, science will advance best if it is driven by the needs of the people who suffer from these diseases. And in that sense, and I should have said that you're from the University of Southampton, which has a long and pioneering uh, asthma uh, unit, is something that actually you're going to take forward and make the norm for all your research. Well, I, I have to say this wasn't you know, uniquely a Southampton idea, although I appreciate and thank you for highlighting the excellence in Southampton. Uh, this, the, the whole concept uh, has developed through a, a lot of discussion. We had uh, a, uh, a working group uh, funded by the FB7 program called IRIP, uh, which was led by Asthma UK, the uh, leading asthma charity in the United Kingdom. And uh, we discussed what it is that uh, uh, we needed. What is it that uh, science needs to do? What is it that we as clinicians do? And we engage patients a lot. And so out of those discussions, which resulted in, a, in an editorial published in the, the ERJ, we uh, came to the conclusion that 
if we're really going to make a step change in, in asthma management, understanding the disease and so on, we had to put the patients at the center of everything uh, that we do. So uh, I, I don't take full credit myself for this concept of patient-centeredness. It came out of discussions. It's a collective uh, decision uh, that has brought us here. And finally, tell me where you are in terms of uh, the progress of this uh, collaboration. So, um, in order to conduct the research uh, that is part of our ambition, we need so-called registries. Uh, so, uh, patient registries contain the details of all the patients uh, that uh, have been captured by their physicians and put onto a centralized data bank base. Now, uh, we have the ambition to have registries, national registries, from across the whole of Europe. Uh, at the moment, we have 10 well-established registries, including the United Kingdom. And, uh, and what, we, what we're doing now is analyzing, we've analyzed, and there'll soon be a publication, uh, how, how much heterogeneity there is in the way these registries are set up, and also how much heterogeneity there is in amongst the patients and how they are treated across Europe. So that is, you know, the first look to see what this, you know, fascinating continent of ours, uh, you know, what, what is the fabric of, 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 the, uh, of the severe asthma disease. And uh, we have five pharmaceutical companies as intimate partners with whom we work very closely together. Uh, so we've been, um, we established ourselves uh, in, uh, in April, and so we've now completed our first uh, set of analyses, and we're now uh, enrolling national registries from across Europe, which is going to be quite a task, but nevertheless very enjoyable. Well, fantastic, and very good luck with it. So the clinical research collaborations, as we're hearing, are a force not only for science, but actually for patient benefit too.